Good morning. It's now 7 a.m. on Saturday the 3rd of August. I'm Andy and this is my allotment. As per usual, I'll give you a quick run round as what's been going on, where we've got to, which isn't very far this week to be fair. Um, what's coming up, what's new, and later on I'm going to do a potato reveal from the sack of potatoes I've got inside the polytunnel. And I'll show you what's happening in the polytunnel as well. Um, when I get to it. But um, let's start off with the potatoes as, as always. As you can see they're now starting to flop over. These in the middle here are my first early so they're going to be coming out this week. There are a few on the surface as I've said before. Um, I failed miserably with my earthing up but the potato plants got so big that I wasn't really able to do very much with them. At the back the potatoes in the buckets are doing absolutely fantastic which I'm surprised at because I thought that they would be uh, struggling really. Anyway, moving on to square foot gardening bed. Uh, I keep saying the square foot gardening bed, but I'm aware that some of you may not really know much about square foot gardening and what it is and how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, string up the bed next to it and basically start planting into that square foot gardening style where I've got the weeds out, that is, at the top end of it at least, and show you how it goes, how you get a square foot gardening bed, how you plant into it, and the progress basically as we go along but anyway this is a square foot gardening bed here everything's doing really well uh, one problem I've found is the lettuce have been left to go a bit far and as you can see with the rain landing on them and sitting on them they're starting to rot so I've had to take a couple out and there's a third one there that needs to come out I missed that one last night peas are doing absolutely wonderfully as you can see in there but there's plenty of peas coming on not really swelling very much as yet, but with the rain we've had recently, after the dry spell, that should do wonderful for them. Uh, beetroot doing fine, the chard doing fine. Got some beans in there I need to uh, get some poles in for, because it's starting to spread and they're all the way through to the front here. So I've got to untangle those and get them going up rather than out. But um, all told, I'm quite happy they've got some lovely purple flowers coming on them. French beans climbing the pole. And they've actually reached the top, which is great. Cabbages, as I said, I think I overplanted this bed. Uh, put them a bit too close together, but uh, never mind. I may look at transplanting one or two of the weaker ones and uh, hope they survive, but at the moment I'm quite happy to leave them in there because they're covered. The blackcurrant bushes, which are poking through around the sides and being a bit swamped, really, uh, hopefully they'll be um, transferred soon as were the gooseberries and my other black currants at the top there that were bought as blackberries. Potatoes in buckets, I'll show you while I'm here. As you can see they're flopping over. Strangely, the ones that are flopping over here, the one you can see in the middle which is totally bare in the middle, that is Anya, which is supposedly a main crop. So I'm not sure what's happening there. But uh, I'm going to be probably taking one of these later. I've got two buckets of each of um, four of three varieties and three buckets of two varieties if you understand what I'm talking about so I've got 14 buckets in here in total should be loads of potatoes in there I'm hoping but this is the experiment to find out if the stuff in the buckets does as well as the stuff in the ground I mean there's so much overgrowth here you can't tell they've got a two foot path in between it there it's just completely and utterly covered by potatoes I'm not complaining I like potatoes okay the onion bed has now been weeded <laughs> yeah Okay, I should have done this a long time ago, but it's now clear. Some of the bigger onions in the middle you can see are falling over. These are ones that survived the overwintering process. Um, they're pretty much ready for harvesting. They're falling over by themselves. So I'm leaving them in today, because today on the allotment we've got an open day. And uh, I'm going to be showing people around, so I don't have great big gaps in the middle. I'd rather show them the onions in the ground. And maybe show them how you lift an onion and what you do with it afterwards type of thing. I don't know, I'll play it by ear. Okay, up to the fruit and herb bed. The herbs are going absolutely ballistic as you can see from here. Um, there's three lots of herbs in there. I've got coriander at this end, then the dill, then chervil. And they're doing absolutely fantastically. Apart from the fact that they're flowering, but that's beside the point. Um, I'll collect some coriander seed off that later. As we use a lot of that in our cooking, so it's not wasted. And the dill, I'll harvest, chop it and freeze it and uh, we'll have that later on um, through the year when we can uh, fish it out of the freezer and just use it 
And what I found with the herbs is the best way of I found of doing it is simply just chopping them as fronds or as stems, stick them in a plastic bag and let them freeze. Because then what happens is in the freezer the leaves become automatically detached from the stem. Or if they don't, you simply rub the bag between your hands before you open it. And then when you sprinkle it, you get a sprinkling of effectively fresh frozen leaves. And they've come off the stems and it's great. Okay, look at the hanging baskets. This one here with all the tomatoes, etc. There's a couple of small fruits on them, but nothing major. Now this one here has got some fair-sized tomatoes in there. And some little ones which are, you can see it, turning red. Uh, now I had the tiny, tiny ones that turned red, basically because they dropped off. And they were the sweetest tomatoes I've ever tasted. I thought they were absolutely lovely. Just as she they were so tiny. This hanging basket there again, tomatoes on it, fruit, all doing well. The rain we're having recently is helping tremendously in keeping these watered. Because otherwise, they were drying out, they were flopping over, they weren't very happy, getting stressed. But the rain is doing wonderful. We've had a few heavy-ish showers. I won't say that we've had heavy showers, we've had heavy-ish showers recently. But um, nothing spectacular. And uh, the thunderstorms appear to have missed us mostly. We had a couple of thunderstorms last week. But this week we've not really had a huge amount. And uh, it's been just nice. We've had nice weather through the days, mostly, with a bit of rain. And then at night, a bit more rain. Um, all right, raspberries. Now pretty much finished. So these are going to be trimmed back after the weekend. Um, trimming back all the stems that are fruited down to the ground, because these are obviously the summer fruiting ones. At this end, the raspberries that were sold to me as red currants, but it's obviously turned out to be raspberries, they must be autumn fruiting because there's nothing coming on those at all. Right. I'll show you the other side of the beds from this side this time. We've got strawberries, some uh, sweet marjoram which is starting to flower, which looks nice. Loads more strawberries in there, some thyme which is uh, spreading out. I'll probably take some cuttings from that and replant it on because apparently that's how you do the woody herbs like the rosemaries and the, uh, the thymes, etc. Lots more strawberries on the other side. The strawberries have all finished now pretty much this year. There are some haven't flowered yet. So I'm hoping those are the, um, the later fruiting varieties and just simply not going to flower this year. I don't know. Then around the corner there we've got some mint. In the middle, absolutely going wild is sage. Again, I would pick and freeze some leaves on that. Now with these being bigger leaves, I'll take these off the stems. I won't leave those on the stems to freeze because there's no point freezing sage stems. We don't use the stem, we just use the leaf. So I just pick some nice leaves one night. I'll take them home and freeze them. And I've got some more mint on there, which is absolutely going wild as well. Okay, let's take you around the corner. Rhubarb is doing absolutely brilliantly. Now, this one at the front here is uh, an older plant. It's about four years old, so I can take virtually all of those stems, which I'm going to. Um, my stepdad Ken is always on at me when he can have some more rhubarb. So we may be selling, uh, selling, giving some of this away today on the allotment day as part of um, one of the raffle prizes. We normally have uh, a basket of um, produce from the gardens. So I'll probably give some of the rhubarb for that. And I might give a cabbage as well. Now at the back here there's two more plants which are equally as vigorous as the one at the front. But as you can see in there, the stems are rather thin and spindly. There's nothing really on them. So... I'm hoping they will bulk out, but for this year, with this only being the second year, there were seedling plants last year, this is the second full year, then I'm hoping that um, they will bulk out next year. Whereas this one here at this end is a Victoria rhubarb. And the stems on this are quite nice. Nice and red ones at the bottom there, so I say they weren't coming out shortly. The pond is doing wonderful with all this water, as you can see it's filled up completely. Uh, it's still full of newts, absolutely heaving with them. Not sure where they're all coming from, but I'm not complaining. And on the decking down there, as you can see at the front, we've got a couple of peppermint plants. Uh, there's a sage, there's lemongrass at the back. And I've still got a few rogue tomatoes, which I've never actually put in a pot anywhere. So I shall have to uh, sort those out later. Uh, the bench, which I've got there, gives you all the mess around it. Um, that's one that I picked up when I got the shed. Unfortunately, it was rotten. And... Uh, my son sat on it, <laughs> it's gone through. The whole thing itself isn't stable at all, so I think rather than trying to mend it, I'm just going to scrap it, take it apart, take it to, give it to somebody who wants to burn it, or take it down to the tip or whatever, I don't know yet. 
Right, let's move on. Leeks doing absolutely wonderfully. Uh, I've harvested all the garlic, that's all come out from here. That was done last night because all the stems have gone brittle and um, they were getting a bit rusty as well and this time I do mean rust. So they've all come out and they're drying in the polytunnel which uh, I'll probably show you later on. But these leeks are doing absolutely fantastically. They're all put in at the same time, all the same sort of thickness of leek. But these at the front are now about an inch thick whereas the ones at the back are only like three quarters of an inch. And then there's a few more leeks at the front here which I planted up, um, which I got later. Looks like only five or six of those have survived. Uh, but they're not doing so bad. They're doing fine. So I'll have uh, a couple of pickings of leeks off those. Last of the cabbages from last year are still in. That's a rather nice one there. And they're a rather moth eater or cabbage eater. Red cabbages in here, doing rather well. And broccoli, gone to seed. I was going to take that out last time and didn't, but uh, hey, never mind. Right, my pumpkin patch. It's good coming down first thing in the morning because you get to see all the flowers on the pumpkins, etc., coming out. There's a uh, cracking one there, another one underneath. So, this is my courgette zucchini in the middle here and it is absolutely going uh, mental. I've got leaves sticking out miles, I've got fruit coming off it all the time which is really really good and uh, it's doing fantastically well. Now the pumpkins itself, uh, if you remember this is the bed where one of the pumpkins self soiled in this corner which is what we've got coming out here and standing up there climbing up the trellis with the beans. It's using the beans to pull itself up I think there to be honest. Uh, that's doing okay. I've got a fruit around the other side which I'll show you later. The main pumpkin, which I actually sold myself, is in here. That's brought out a fruit under here, which is uh, got a hand in there so you can see the size. It's about six, seven inches across, but the main fruit on this particular vine, which is coming out here, is underneath this leaf. In there, and that's about ten inches across. So that's doing quite well. As you can see the runner beans are to the top of the arches on every pole now, they've even reached it on that one from both sides. And I have a green arch. Now that's what I intended when I put these up. Um, I'm still not too happy about the arch themselves because they're not doing what I was hoping they'd do when I put them together. I hope they'd be nice and rounded like this first one here, as you can see it's rather nice. But all the rest are odd angles and bends and twisted and it just didn't work the way I wanted it to. But still, let's have a walk through the arch. So lots and lots of beans in here. As you can see, these are just starting to come. And some more here starting to come. So there's going to be thousands of beans. Some bigger ones there. And as you go further and further down, these are the plants at this end that started going first. So we've got some more here, which are decent size. Uh, but these are the whoppers. And you can see that properly. And they're probably about 12 inches long. A couple more inside that. Now, this is the, is the pumpkin that's self sowed This is another self sown pumpkin. There's two or three of these I've found um, growing in this bed. And the fruit from this pumpkin is out here, under there. It's only a little one. It's only about four inches across this time. But the vine itself is stretching right the way around to here and coming out. But it's just basically taking over in there. Alright, let's show you the other bed. Again, this bed has got French, climbing French beans here on the poles. It's re they've reached the top of the poles on all cases, but there's no real flowers on them as yet. Having said that, I think I've just seen... No, no it's not. I thought it was a bean, but it's not. At the front here, I've got three pea plants which are just about surviving. Behind that is a round courgette. See if I can get in and show you these. As you can probably see down there, there's some round ones coming on. We've had a couple of them already, about three or four, and they're doing quite well. In the middle there, we've got sweet corn. Now there's about there's well, there's seven plants of sweet corn in there, but uh, I can see two sticking out because the pumpkins have just swallowed the rest of the beans. 
I'm quite pleased with these beams on this side that are going up the uh, the other side of the archway because um, when they were first put in most of the beans were planted in the ground and they didn't germinate the runner beans which are the red flowers however I then transplanted some purple beans which I think were Mr Fortune um, uh, French beans, French climbing beans and they've actually got purple flowers and you can see that behind the red ones there and they started to go as well so I've got a mixture of runner beans and French beans on here which is going to be quite interesting to work out which is which when it comes to harvest time Round the far end of this bed is another pumpkin, and uh, a pumpkin, sorry, courgette, which I'll uh, try and squeeze through here to see. Uh, this is a little one coming on there. Uh, this is another zucchini, but it's doing absolutely brilliantly. I mean, the plant in the middle of it is strong as anything, and I'm getting loads and loads of uh, fruit off this one, having plenty of stuff done. Right, no real progress on the shed as yet. Uh, it's been a month end at work and it's been very very busy um, so I've not been able to get down here as much as I would have liked uh, also the weather's not been so good for the evenings to actually put a roof on so we've left it as it stands at the moment the plan at the moment is to build the roof out of scaffolding board and simply layer it up until we reach the top cover it in felt put the edging boards on you'll never know the difference uh, put some gutters on it and put some uh, um, water butts on this side of it at the front to catch the rain water and then I'll have my own independent uh, source of water which is going to be quite good the last thing I want to do is run out of water and from here you see up there where the blue tarp is that's where the water butts are for the, for the, for the site it's not that far but it's far enough for me not really too uh, happy about having to carry lots of water from there down here backwards and forwards I'd rather do it from local source the grass here needs cutting back but fortunately now because I've covered the rest of the, the plot in this black uh, weed fabric there's not a lot of weeds on here now the nettles I'm going to be harvesting I keep saying that I'm putting in to making some nettle tea the comfrey I'm going to make into comfrey tea and uh, my bag of uh, leaf mould that's going to be moving soon so this area here can be all cleared and leaf mould is going to move up to there where the compost bins are not taking any compost out of those bins as yet the blue one I got that in September last year and started using it straight away it's been full to the brim several times it's now about two thirds full so whatever's happening is happening all right and it's composting down but I've not dared move it yet because I really don't I'm really worried about what's underneath it just in case it's not nice <laughs> silly I know but well walk on the edge of the path a little bit now this area at the bottom here I've not shown you for a while this is where we're going to be having the, our composting toilet we're going to be basically putting a, a shed on there a 6x8 uh, shed with a composting loo in it um, the plastic chairs are going to be going obviously and um, that's going to be used by the entire allotment uh, which makes life good for people like me who have quite a way to travel to get here because uh, I live about 10-15 minutes drive away which means that um, if I need to use the loo through the day it makes it a bit awkward going home to come back again another view of the shed as you can see this bottom right corner is a bit of damage nothing serious nothing that can't be fixed or repaired or reinforced or what have you um, one other plan we do have for the roof is to put one of the side one of the side pieces for the roof on as it is because it's not in such bad nick and we may just build up the other side with scaffolding boards again not certain still working on that one i'll just give you a quick scan around the plot then i'll go into the polytunnel and i'll show you the polytunnel and what's happening inside there in a second Okay, there. inside the polytunnel now, so I can show you what's happening in here. Got uh, assortments of tomatoes, chilies, all sorts in here. And uh, one thing I'm quite interested in here is the one on the front, which is a tomatillo. Uh, never grown those before, but apparently they're part of the same family as the Coop Cape gooseberry. So they grow fruit surrounded by one of these paper Chinese lanterns. And uh, it never goes red, it's green, although it, it's supposed to be a Mexican tomato 
use it in chutneys, sauces and things like that. So I'm quite looking forward to that because I like those. At the front here, we've got some uh, sweet corn. Now, these sweet corn were supposedly going in the same bed as the other sweet corn to give them a bit of a boost and so on. But the um, courgettes and the beans took over and there is no space in there whatsoever. So I've got to put these somewhere separate. I've got some spare beans at the back of those. At the back of those, I've got some peas, which are uh, not doing too well, I don't think, at the moment. They don't seem to like the compost they're in. So this lot's probably got to come out. Moving on to this tray. Some uh, Mizuna, which has gone to seed, really. So I should be getting rid of that. And some more tomatoes at the back. We've got different varieties. Again, I've got about 10 or 15 different varieties of tomato in here. Moving on. More tomatoes. Well, actually, these are mascotas, I think. No, it's money maker. <laughs> okay. And then behind them, we've got a few other tomatoes. Peppers. Excuse the angle on the camera. I've got a tripod attached to this. Drag it over my legs at the moment. And uh, uh, more peppers. Actually, got a leaf there. You can see. Right, that's better. More peppers, more tomatoes. Now, I'll just show you on this side. I have got lots and lots of tomatoes. As you can see here, quite a few coming on. That's from a totem, I think it is there. Then we've got Sparta which has got lots of flowers but no tomatoes as yet and then this is Roma uh, I'm very happy with these, they're plum tomatoes and they're doing really really well one thing I'm going to do, which I haven't done with these corn tomatoes is to strip off the lower leaves up to where the um, tomatoes are forming and basically see from there, as you can probably hear it's just started to rain as well so I'm very pleased I'm inside the polytunnel at the moment okay drying in here I have got my shallots harvest I'm hoping you can see from there plenty of these got some more tomatoes I can excuse the angle on the camera I really should have taken the tripod off before I came in here and uh, this is the garlic I harvested yesterday not particularly brilliantly sized huge bulbs but you know it's garlic what more do I want Just adjust this tripod because it's, it's getting annoying. Hang on a second. Right, okay. I'll keep talking while I'm adjusting. Um, I've potted up my cucumbers, as you can see at the front there. Um, they're starting to get flowers on and they were in little tiny pots. So I decided that enough's enough, they've got to come out of those tiny pots. And uh, so they're in slightly larger ones, they've been watered, they haven't been fed yet, so I'm going to do that today and hopefully I'll get slightly some cucumbers off them. Right, chilies. You can see that but I've got a totally red chilli. Now this plant was sold to me as a feelers blue, where the, the, uh, the peppers are actually blue in colour. As you can see, there's sort of a purpley colour there with green on the other side and then they turn bright red. So I'm certain that wasn't a feelers blue. Then again, I'm not, what, am I, what do I know? I'm not, I'm not a chilli expert. If anybody is and they're growing them themselves, a feelers blue, let me know if yours has done the same because I'm not convinced that's a feelers blue. I've then also got here a Thai culinary. Now, all the chilies are standing straight up on top of the plant, which is quite impressive. They're all green at the moment, but again, I'm hoping they'll turn nicely red. Then we've got, uh, I think this one is a New Max Twilight, and as you can see, we've got little tiny purple chilies, which are standing straight up again. I think that's a New Max Twilight. Let me just find the label and I'll check. Yep, New Max Twilight. And then we have some KN purples, which again are standing straight up on the plant. Very impressive looking chilies, but uh, quite hot, I believe. Now, a friend of mine who's a chili freak, if you like, he loves hot chilies, tried one of these, but when it was green, and said it was a lot of heat but no real flavour. And he's also tried one of these. With those, he said 
a lot of heat but a lot of really nice flavour so that's what I wanted, I wanted a flavourful chilli rather than one that's simply hot but uh, still that's the way it goes now, potatoes I have a bag of potatoes there this bag is going to be harvested this morning uh, when it stops raining, which hopefully won't be long, looking at the sky it's just going to pass over soon but uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this bag outside and uh, harvest it into the wheelbarrow and do a reveal to see what comes out of it. Uh, this one is Casablanca. Um, this is supposed to be the up and coming potato this year. It's the, the new thing, or maybe not the new thing, but it's the most recent thing that people are raving about. Apparently it's resistant to most things, it gives a decent yield, etc, yada yada yada. We shall wait and see. Um, it's time for it to come out, it's flopping over, it's going yellow. It's been in now for nearly 14 weeks, 13 and a half weeks it's been in for. So it's about time that I've took it out. Um, we need some new potatoes at home. This is supposed to be new potatoes. We'll see what can come from three seed potatoes in a bag. Uh, I emptied a pen of javelins two weeks ago and was disappointed by the yield, to be honest, because there were plenty of potatoes on there, but some of them were only the size of grapes. So I think I emptied it too early. But then again, the flowers were a wrong colour for Pentland Javelin. They're supposed to be bright, pure white, and these were purple with yellow centres. Uh, a lot of other people on the internet and here at the plot have had the same thing with their Pentland Javelins. They've got different coloured flowers. So what I'm thinking is, we all bought them from pound shops or pound savers or wherever you want to call them. And I think that the supplier who put them in the bags and labelled them up has labelled them wrongly. So that what we thought we were buying at Pendleton Javelin being a first early may possibly not have been a first early. It might have even been a main crop. But, of course, we had no way of knowing. And we just harvested what we thought was a first early at the time we would harvest a first early after 10 or 11 weeks. And was disappointed by the results. So I'm hoping that we will see a little bit more on this. But, again, I've got about um, 10 minutes of film left on this memory card and hopefully that should be enough to do the reveal on the potatoes once it stops raining so i'll see you then bye bye okay time for the big potato reveal this is the sack from inside the polytunnel i've cut off all the homes first of all and i'll see if there's anything worth having inside it getting out first of all Ridiculous. Oh. Doesn't want to come out of the bag. Right. The most no that noise sounded good anyway. Right, let's get a bucket and let's start filling it. It's looking pretty good actually. It's a decent sized one. It's a couple of babies. I've got a couple of tiny baby ones on the bottom but I'm not too concerned about that because I can eat the rest. That one's uh, got a bit rotten inside but uh, we'll see. Now this is what I'm talking about, this is better. The rotten one, I'm not sure what's happened with that, but uh, get rid of that one. Decent sized. Okay, uh, here's another potato reveal. Uh, if you remember when I planted up everything. I planted potatoes in the ground, in buckets, and then in sacks in the polytunnel to see what the difference would be in the yields. So I think it's only fair, as I've emptied the bucket, the uh, the sack in the polytunnel, to empty out a bucket of Casablanca now. So I've trimmed the tops off. Let's see what we've got in here. It's looking good because there's roots coming out the bottom. Came out the bag a lot easier as well. Let's see how well we've done. Well, looking good so far. Tiddlers. That's the 
the original seed potato. Now that's a cracker, that's the biggest I've had so far. Right, so that's the original seed potato there, I think. Still quite a few little ones, that's a seed potato there I think there as well. Still quite a few little ones on the end of the horns but uh, not too bothered about that. And another seed potato there. No, nope, that's it. Not as much soil as there was in the uh, one in the polytol, that was huge. But a much, much bigger yield. And the potatoes are all of a decent size. A few small ones in there, but some crackers. So I think overall, growing in bags in the polytunnel is not as good as growing in buckets in the beds. I'll do some digging find one of the Casablancas and dig that up next and just compare and see how we do. Anyway, I'll okay, welcome back to the big potato reveal. So, what I've done, rather than showing you a picture of me digging potatoes, and we've all seen loads and loads of videos of people digging up potatoes, and to be honest, it's getting boring. I've dug three Casablanca potatoes out of my bed, because if you remember, this was three Casablanca potatoes in a bag in the polytunnel, this, three Casablanca potatoes in a bucket outside, in the beds. And this is three Casablanca potatoes put in the ground. I think it's pretty obvious what the results are. Third place, bag in the polytunnel. Lots of little ones, but a decent crop. Bucket outside, a few little ones, but mostly decent sized potatoes of that sort of variety. Dug outside. Now as you know, when you dig outside, you don't always get every single potato, so I'm going to go through there again later and just double check I've got them all out. I don't want too many volunteers next year because I'm not putting potatoes back there again, for obvious reasons. There are a few small ones, but even the small ones are bigger than some of these. And I've got some absolutely crackers. So, definitely outside, in the ground, in future. And I think I'll be trying Casablanca again because that looks like a decent crop. As long as it tastes nice, then fine, we'll do that. Anyway, I hope you found the experiment interesting because I certainly have. Um, and the good thing for me is I've got another row and a half of Casablanca potatoes in there, about another six or seven plants. And if I get that off three, and I've got all the rest of the potatoes as well, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the, with the rest of the month, or the rest of the year even, apart from eating potatoes. Anyway. That's all for now. I might come back later on and do a bit of filming at the actual open day itself and uh, give you some, try and give you some idea of what's going on. But uh, for now, from uh, Cartmel Crescent Allotments, about 8am on Saturday the 3rd of August, bye bye for now.